I was told to cover the open source development aspect of uh, uh, the computer science field. So I don't know that I like that phrase. Do you have the opportunity? I did have the opportunity. Actually, I had a lot of fun developing this and uh, figuring out when, how I'd uh, lay this out and present this. So um, here we go. There, that's just a list of, in case you can't tell, of applications that use open source approaches. Um, here's what it is. It's software that um, comes with source code that um, someone else could easily access and you know understand and, and change. It also can be um, freely distributed in its uh, original and uh, altered forms without any uh, royalties by license. Um, and it also can be uh, legally used on any platform through license. So there shouldn't be any restrictions where it's used. It should be capable of running on a Mac or a, a tablet or a PC or something of the sort without um, any complications with the, uh, you know, court. So. Here's what it's not. Um, Software, obviously, whose source code is obfuscated so that other people can't understand it. They have to be able to understand it or to modify it and move the software forward. Open source software, believe it or not, is not always free software. It frequently is, but it can be sold. Um, however, you know, it's and it, it might also be based off other software that is proprietary, so it uses that software as a base. So the software laid in love with could be open source. And I was going to demonstrate something that is an example of that in a minute here. Um, it's also um, obviously software whose source code is not available. It shouldn't just be compiled. Um, and just beta testing software obviously does not count. I'm saying a lot of Captain Obvious things, but I thought I'd uh, cover that to be clear. Um, some examples of uh, open source software and programming languages that are uh, open source are uh, the Firefox uh, web browser, um, Linux operating systems. Um, we all know those have you know community collaborations. Um, the Java programming language and it's a bytecode compiler that's, that can be downloaded and um, used anywhere. Um, uh, mods of games can also be open source. Um, uh, use the open source approach and communities will collaborate on that. Um, a GIMP and Blender is another fair example, and so is a uh, Ruby. Um, the advantages of this approach, it offers a chance for such software to basically, uh, other programmers can understand it and they can have, you know, this can make this a learning experience for anyone. Um, the second advantage is that it um, offers variety. A lot of programmers will create variants and evolve versions of the software and, you know, the software can, you know, move forward with uh, all, all kinds of, you know, different possibilities that couldn't just possibly be imagined by one programmer for you know one team working on all of this. It also allows a large community to collaborate to accelerate software. Um, and through such involvement, uh, software some software can stay alive for uh, many years. Uh, without um, open source, some software would not be up to date today. Um, and then it allows others to evaluate the integrity of the initial program's design. So like you know if a, um, if a programmer Say, for example, made some creates some open source software, but also decided to um, put a little virus in it, which is really unlikely, you know. But um, if you decided to do that, someone would be able to easily see that, and uh, you know, the programmer can immediately be taken into question. Um, some disadvantages is that um, such software might not be stable for others to use. There's uh, um, all kinds of variants that are not, you know, complete or you know, as uh, some of the people that have been presenting might just be meant to be prototypes rather than the actual full version. And uh, actually, a fair example of this, um, I have a chat client, and they have a version called the stable and a version um, called the open or something like that. And the open version is uh, is going through is basically a community collaboration. It's continuously being being revised, and the stable one is one that's been agreed on that you know they'll stay at that version specifically for a while. What that means is it's not going to, you know, change and possibly have a lot of bugs. Um, the software might not have a qualified support team, and you won't really have uh, updates from an official uh, source. You have to, you know, find them yourself. You're basically got to be self-dependent. Um, you also risk damaging the machine, the data, and or the concern software or the um, software through this uh, development process. Um, I also remember. Um, 
forgot to put, include this in here. Um, some other uh, um, financial manager pointed out that if um, people start using open source more and more and become more involved with the open source movement, it starts, you know, taking over the, the market. There, there could be some real fiscal problems uh, with the fiscal management of how the products come out and everything, which I thought was sort of interesting. Um, places where such software would be used would include a home environment, um, especially one of a, you know, a, a serious programmer um, or is her own, um, her own understanding. Road business centers, so this is like, you know, small places that are connected to a, a larger business, but they are kind of, you know, some uh, small experimental bases. Um, I just wanted to point out for fun that Google um, is all about open source development, kind of just um, sort of a truth in it, a um, little bit of a joke at the same time. Um, places where, so where uh, software would not be used is that um, many large enterprises and businesses, because they, they want, sometimes they do not want to mess with uh, having to deal with the source code themselves. They would rather have some develop, um, the original developer be able to just fix pro any problems with them in a flash. Um, the government has um, apparently um, stated in an article that it would not rely much on open source software because they're afraid of its stability. Um, and uh, many other ordinary users and some of the programmers. And uh, my llama would not use this software. His name's Cusco. Um, okay, okay, it's his second cousin. It doesn't look quite. Um, well, there's my references, um, but I was going to demonstrate um, the what op the um, evolution of a uh, what evolution of uh, open source um, collaborations can present, and we are familiar with the, some of these already. But I particularly um, played a game since I was a little kid, and um, it was sold as a proprietary thing from a company called Parallax, which is now dead. But here is what it originally looked like. It ran in a, in a DOS function. Um, back then it was really cool, but now if, it, if it one tried to decide to play today, they obviously couldn't really play it so well. Their eyes would start, you know, falling apart because they're used to all the, you know, modern graphics and everything, right? So this is what it looks like um, by itself without, you know, open source collaboration to what it has become today. It's okay. But it's <laughs> really, it was really, it, it, you can tell that it just looks really old and it just moves very, it, it's really rough and everything. So it shows changes. I'm about to. I'm going to quit out of this one. And now, there is a project called the DXS Rebirth Project. That's the logo right there. And here is what they have come up for as an alternative. You're also allowed to put um, the Mac version of the thing on <laughs> top of that, which was cooler for me, because I actually played it on Mac when I was little. It already looks nicer, and just to prove how nice it looks, we're going to go ahead and go right to the first level. It looks much better, runs a lot smoother, and I can. Yeah, but you understand that the hardware is much, much better behind this. Obviously, yes. Mm -hmm. They have that in mind. Okay. And I'm going to get out of that. Um, there's all kinds of things you could do on that. A small, a small add-on is that um, on the side of the graphics being better and everything, they used to have a, um, an obsolete network protocol that um, was known as IPX. Um, and now it actually uses TCP IP, or rather it uses UDP through um, a special filter to actually track the game and be able to allow people to play it online. So it makes it 10 times more fun. So that's that. Can you tell us what open source is? Mm -hmm. Tell me how it's open source development. How is open source development? How, not just the what, but how. How's open source? How's open source? We've been talking about development models. 
So what's different about the open source development model than what we talked about before? How does open source development work? Well, the first thing that I would say is that um, it could be started by um, one person, but that one person is going to submit um, the source code to, you know, somehow to everybody else or allow everybody to, you know, take a look at it and be able to create their own variants of it, um, be able to point out bugs to him. Rather than just uh, test it, um, he gets, uh, he or she gets other people um, around the world, whoever chooses to jump on the wagon to just um, be a collaborative part of this project. Um, that's the one thing in particular that comes to mind. Okay, so collaboration. Mm -hmm. Distributed in the sense that the development is not done in one place, but it's distributed all over the world, which may be the case, by the way, with a larger company and outsourcing today. Yeah. Anyone help him out? What's different with, um, what's different about open source development? Is it not as not as structured? I mean, I think there wouldn't be as much, you know, to the business aspect well, of it. We don't know what the structure is. What I'm after is what's the structure? Maybe, maybe you are right, yes, it's less structured, but what's the structure? How do I know that it's less structured? Um, how's, how's it work? What's it depend upon? That's what I'm after. Depends on... But you do a good job. People that just um, choose to. You got that. You got the controversy. You captured the controversy mm -hmm. that goes 